second and three. He's he's gonna pass. Touchdown! Touchdown, Bonavis. Touchdown! Craig Williams with a touchdown reception. His parents are sitting right in front of us. They're, and they're pretty proud of their son <laughs> right there. That's an excellent play. Troy Stouter did just a great job of holding on to that ball as long as he possibly could. Found Williams open in the end zone and fired a strike right there to him. So the score right now is 13-7. Buena Vista off a beautiful pass and catch. This Stouter. team is really fired up. Here we're going to try for the extra point add to that six point lead. Matt Gregg up to the extra point and good. We're going to send you to a break right now. When we join you, Beavers will be up 14-7. She is one of America's toughest drug enforcement agents. Last year, she helped convict 90 drug dealers, seized several tons of crack and marijuana, and closed down 10 major drug operations. She is a 68-year-old grandmother named Irma. She set up a community drug watch that is not only changing her neighborhood, but its future. There are many ways to help in your community. Call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. We're back at Jay Leslie Rollins Stadium, everybody. If you haven't joined us, you should have joined us earlier. 14 to seven, our score, Buena Vista over Upper Iowa right now. We just scored a, about a 14 yard pass. And there are the cheerleaders <laughs> doing that touchdown push-ups they have to do. Well, let's hope they keep doing some more here. You bet, we wouldn't mind seeing about 28, maybe 35 more of those out of them today. This team has just come out focused. You can tell that this off week really helped them kind of get back into the swing of things as, as a player. Really helped them. Coleman, and he's tackled. Oh, he's hit Breaks hard, but he gets away. Going up the right side, and he's tackled by Brent Achenbach. Good open field tackle. Another flag on that play. Wait for the preliminary indication to see what that is. 14 to 7, our score. 7.06 left in the third quarter. Remember, uh, Mario Coleman on the return. I thought I, I may have said Marco. And it's clipping against Upper Iowa. That'll push him back even more. The Peacocks will be sitting at about their 15-yard line, and that will not vote well for the Peacocks head coach. Oh, they wind up at their 13-yard line, and this is where they started the last drive. The pressure by the Buena Vista defense just couldn't help them all that much, and uh, Edwards got that fumble recovery. Let's hope we can do it again. You bet. Nothing wrong with that. Hopefully the defense is plugging in there. They're ready to go. They're fired up. Proctor, the lone setback. Mario Coleman to the near side, number five, Gary Lynn to the wide. Pass up to Lynn, it's complete for about eight yards. Nice catch there by Lynn, he did a good job of concentrating on the ball and pulling it in with all with a swarm of deep BV defenders on him. So it'll be about second down at about three yards for the first. And Coleman again is the lone setback. Lynn and Coleman are the wide receivers to the near side. We got some movement, no flag. Looks like they got back in time. Oh, man, with his number 10, we placed the guy to Johnny Thomas who was nowhere. Chris Barron's blasted through that line untouched, and he got to the running back almost before he got the ball. Mitch Cushette and Chris Barron's combining on the tackle, and that is a loss of about four yards. It pushes them back to where they started. They are right at about the 13. Excuse me, 17 yard line. Cachette is picking up right where right where Grant left off in the first half. That's really nice when one guy can go down and another guy steps in and does just a great job. That's the depth Twade has been talking about. He said if his team gets healthy, they'll be hard to contend with. Walshire back to pass. Akenbach nearly oh. intercepts and that was a great play. And Twaite hugs. Twaite is Huck. fired up and well he should be. Brent Ackerbach was just was just all over the Look at Upper Coach Twait. Look at him. And remember earlier in the game we said Achenbach and Murphy are the anchors to that backfield. They were going to play a big role, and they have so far. That's just great coverage. Craig Williams to receive the punt, and he has had a heck of a game just receiving a TV pass not too long ago. And again, the defense holds. Here comes punt number nine for Mr. Rodriguez. And we, almost have, we have almost gotten every one of those things. Barron's almost gets that one. This is definitely returnable. Williams return, get the catch oh, 47. There's a flag on that one. 
We may have a penalty against Buena Vista. I don't know. Number twenty, number twenty, David Streeter for Upper Iowa just just threw the Buena Vista blocker to the ground on that one. So it may go either way. We do not know. We'll let you know as soon as the call is made. There's two penalties on it. it looks like we got holding on Buena Vista, and that'll go push them back, depending on where they spot the ball. Because due to the penalty, they hadn't spotted it yet. It it is spotted at the 39, but we're going to truck it back. The 41 of Upper Iowa. We're going to truck it back to the 49 of Buena Vista between 48 and 49. Call it a 48 yard line, first and 10, Buena Vista. That's right. Penalties didn't play a very big role in the first half as Buena Vista only had three of them for 36 yards and Upper Iowa themselves only had two count against them. All right, this second half, we've seen two on Buena Vista, two quick ones. Hendrickson up the gut, he will go nowhere. A lot of physical play going down on that line. Let's hope nothing gets out of hand. You hate to see anything. You really do, you really do, especially when both teams are playing as hard as these two are and they're they're just playing good football right now, and you don't want to see that extracurricular activity take away from that. Now, we both admitted that when we first saw the stats, it didn't look like BV was going to be able to handle this offense that uh, Upper Iowa has thrown at them, but they have handled it and crushed it to this I point. think we must have upset them just a little bit, and they wanted to prove something <laughs> to us and everybody else out there that they're, they're a dang good football team. We said that at the beginning. When, the, when they're healthy, Twait says they can play with the best of them. Stodd are coming up. He will get sacked for a loss here. A great play again by That's number 47, Todd Elkenberg from New Hartford, Iowa. A great play. He's been playing well all day. That is a loss of about 10 on the play. That'll take him back to the 36-yard line. Williams and number 87 for Buena Vista, Scott Herman are checking into the game. Gillivo and Schwieslaw out of the game. Two set, two backs in the eye. Starter back to pass. He's going deep for Williams. Williams cannot get there. Just covered a tad number, overthrew him on yeah, that one. Covered by number three, Dana Mathis. He's had a pretty good game for him. Yes, he has. He, he had good coverage on that one. Williams Williams was not open on that. Stouter is probably, probably smart to throw it a little bit over his head. And we're going to have another punt by Pura Vista's Mark, Mark Huffke. And uh, kind of a dis. Not a, kind of a distant, diff, uh, different look for Buena Vista in this half as they, they are kind of nice punt by mixing Hilmer up right really there. well. Oh, this is great. Let it roll, let it roll. Dead at the five-yard line. Diesel downs it at the five. Beautiful punt there. Nice job by both the punter and Jason Giesel to get down there and roll and fall on it. And this is what we've talked about. The momentum has not shifted yet. As you see, the fans looking pretty happy and pretty cold. Got their beaver hankies out there. The beaver hankies. There you go, there oh, you go. A lot to wave today, folks. Now, this defense has, has a big opportunity here to hold them inside, deep, deep inside uh, Upper Iowa territory. They really do. Upper Iowa just had no no field position whatsoever today, and the defense is taking advantage of that fully. The safety would really look good on our resume right now. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Let's uh, see what they can do. Daniel Disenthrope in motion. Washire has not called the play. Number 10 is in the backfield, Johnny Thomas, for the Peacocks. He receives the handoff. Going around the end, he goes nowhere. 65 Kiesel with the tackle in the backfield. And he's fired up. With, a, with eight from Mitch Cachette, and look at him. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And uh, Mitch Cachette is, is really pumped up. He's helping to call the plays here for the linebacking court due to the no-huddle offense run by Upper Iowa. Let's That's hope right. there's no confusion. They've handled it pretty well so far. I can't see any problems coming that, up. That was actually a loss of two on the play. They're on their three-yard line, it looks like. Walshire under center. Again, Thomas is a setback. You got a three-wide receiver set. Walshire back to pass, under pressure, sack, fumble! We'll have a safety here, folks. No. He's still alive, the ball is still alive. And Cachette gets him at the three. I thought somebody had tackled him, I couldn't see him. That was He fumbled before he, before he came down. Number 10, Johnny Thomas came up with the ball, and very heads up, got out of the end zone quick. And Cachette made a beautiful tackle. Again, that pressure that we're, we've been speaking of, popped the ball up. There's Coach Twait saying, okay, we need to block a little better but we're really moving the ball well. That's right. He's giving them the instructions there, helping out that offensive line that's 
actually a new offensive line right now, but they're playing really good. They have to be very happy with their play. So it's third down and 11 on the four yard line. Walshire is going to run it, but he's going to he's going to gain some yardage here. Not Short enough for the first, the down, first down, though. He'll gain about. He'll gain about nine yards. It'll be about two yards short of the first. He had a lot of open field in front of him, and the Buena Vista defense did a good job of closing that hole right away. So it'll be third down and 11. I don't know what they're going to do. Looks like fourth and one. Dave. Oh, they haven't changed it on the scoreboard. There we board. go. You my, bet. My mistake. Yep. They are punting. We're way ahead of them on that one, aren't we? Oh, yes. We are just so quick. <laughs> and here comes the punt squad once again. How many punts is that? This will be number 10 for the Peacocks. And... They've been getting to him all day, and a block right here would be really nice. Well, they've almost gotten there. He's backed up to the one-yard line now. Craig Williams back to receive once again. No, not enough, not enough uh, substantial pressure here. Williams fair catches is at the 41. We're going to take you to a break. We'll be back in just a moment. Storm Lake, get ready for Honey Kiss Pizza. Hot, delicious pizza on a whole wheat crust, loaded with the finest ingredients and kissed with a sweet touch of honey. It's gourmet pizza like you've never tasted before, served up piping hot and delivered right to your door. Call today and order the Honey Kiss Special. Two medium, two topping pizzas, plus one order of delicious cinnamon breadsticks for only $12.99. Honey on the dough, honey butter on the crust. It's great quality, it's a great value, and it's fast. Call 732-2222 for Honey Kiss Pizza. Welcome back to Jay Leslie Rollins Stadium. The offense coming up to the line, leading 14-7. Stoddard must be a happy camper, happy to be back. He takes his hands off to Joyce, who's up the middle. He's got the first down yard. He has got 14 yards on that carry. Andy Joyce is easily trucking down the field. He's, my, he's a very talented player. We can't emphasize enough the play of this offensive line right here. They're just playing inspired, just beautiful football right now. They're, they're getting the blocks. They're moving people out of the way, and they're making the big holes for the, for the BV You just backs. saw Barons and Radke sitting there talking. They must be happy. Uh, Joyce, the uh, freshman out of Emmitsburg, Iowa. A handoff again to Joyce, and he gains about two yards to about the 24-yard line. All right, credit number 99, Chad Harbaugh with the tackle on that. He's a junior out of Guttenberg, Iowa. Did a nice job of filling up that hole. DeVoe out, and number 87, Scott Herman in. Calling the play, Stoddard takes him up to the line, and they really are moving the ball. It would be nice to get a 14.2 touchdown lead here, folks. Joyce with another carry, and he's barreling. He is bowling them right through. That's That was his run right there. He carried three defenders back about two yards on that one. Nice job by Joyce. Up to about the 21-yard line, a gain of three. So it should be about third down and three for the first, maybe four, and we'll see what they do here. We'll call it third down and five. How about that? Good enough, good <laughs> enough. Here we go now. There you go. You've got... Uh, Ten seconds left. Looks like Stouter is going to let the clock run out on this third That's quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. We're going to stay here, and let's let's kind of uh, emphasize where we're at. For those of you who just joined us, the Buena Vista Beavers are up 14-7 on a Troy Stouter touchdown pass. To two Craig Troy Stouter Moore. touchdown passes right now. He's thrown two today. Just done an excellent job. But the main story is, of course, that defensive that defensive line. They're getting to the Upper Iowa offensive players. They're doing a great job of shutting down. A very powerful Matt Wilshire, great quarterback from Upper Iowa. Just done an excellent job on him today. Now number 10 for Buena Vista is down on the sidelines. He's the backup quarterback, a freshman quarterback I like to talk about. It. Dale, Dan Jesse, he's a new quarterback coming in from Farm, Farmanville, Iowa. And uh, he is supposed to be a beauty, but Stoddard is just too good to pass up with his mobility right now. Right now, and he's just a great leader. The, the players, that they play confident underneath him, you know, and he just does an excellent job of leading the team, as he is doing right now on third and third about five yards from the 21-yard line. So Stoddard, the sophomore quarterback for Buena Vista, is taking him up to the line on third and five on the 21 of the Peacocks. And in case you're just joining us, Buena Vista moving the ball well, and their defense is playing with, with passion. Stoddard rolling left, going out of bounds, a gain of about maybe two, a run out of bounds by number 99, number 21 for Buena Vista. Chad Summy right there trying to get it, trying to get his offense fired up. He's been playing a good job in the defensive backfield today. 
Put some coverage on some very, very fast, and very athletic upper Iowa wide receivers. Now we have three cameramen up on the boot, on top of the press box, bringing you the beautiful shots you're seeing thus far. And uh, let's thank them for that. And right now we've got number 27 coming into the game for Buena Vista, Darren Dietz calling the play. Stoddard leaning them back up to the line. Hendrickson and Joyce are the backs. Shwisa and Dietz are it's a drop play to Joyce. Wide receivers. Joyce up the up the gut for about seven yards. That may be good enough for a first down, and I do believe it is. It's gonna be close and we'll wait for the official word here. But a lot of that was rolling for the official say yes. And they are moving the chains. That is an important thing. Nope. That, We're gonna measure here. Oh. Well, the BB players, I guess, got a little too excited there. So did we, it looks like. All right. So and here come the chains into your picture. And it is. I believe it's going it's to be a first, like a down. first down. First down, it's Buena looking Vista. Good. First down, Buena Vista on the, uh, we'll call it about the 16 of Upper Iowa. We may be heading for a touchdown pretty quick here. Let's hope so. Dietz out, Dillavo in, Stoddard calling the play. Dillavo going to the far side. Shwisaw coming to the near side. Two set backs, Hendrickson and Joyce. Stoddard under center snaps. Hand up to Joyce up the middle, and he gets to about. Breaks two tackles on that one. Brings him down inside the 10 yard line. We'll call it about where they spotted. About the eight yard line, it looks like. Right on the 10. Oh. Right on the 10. And this is what we talked about all game long. Moving the ball in the red zone. Right in, inside that 20-yard line, they had trouble before getting in there today. They've done a really good job. Williams checks back into the game, going to the far side. As we saw to the near side, two set backs, Hendrickson and Joyce. Starter under center. Hands to the first man through Hendrickson, and he's hit immediately. O'Brien had the blitz on on that play, and they were ready for the run up. The, the whole middle. defensive line was hitting there. Number 24, linebacker Demetrius Hayes. Very talented middle linebacker came up and led the charge. Yes, he did. Like you said, the blitz is on, and they had about eight of their 11 guys ready for the run on that one. Dillavo in, and uh, Dillavo and Williams will be your wide receivers. Hendrickson and Joyce remain your backs. There's the beaver in the toga, and uh, he must be happy tonight. And those cheerleaders have something to cheer about. You bet. 14-7, Buena Vista lead. Cut back to Joyce. No, it's a great fake. Joyce catches the ball for a touchdown. Touchdown, Buena Vista. What Beautiful. a fake. He faked us out. He faked everybody out. Joyce with a TD reception, about a 10-yard TD reception from Stoddard. Buena Vista is up 20 to 7. They're fired up now. Look at the sidelines right now. They're, they're ready to taste that first victory of the year right now. These boys are excited. They're ready to play in that defense. You can look at look at them. They're just hungry to get back on the field. Yeah, they're, they're, hard, they're huddling around their defense. Defensive coordinator John Brown and their linebacker coach is, if you give me a moment here, the extra point up and good 21 to 7. Buena Vista, we're going to send you a break. We'll be back with the Beavers up 21 to 7. He protects all living things in the forest. But he can't do it alone. Please don't play with matches. Put out your campfires. And never, ever forget the words of Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. We're back and we're pumped, everybody. It's exciting here to be at J. J. Lesser Rollins Stadium. The Beavers are up 21 to seven with 13.23 left in the fourth quarter. Don Hessen just consoled, or just uh, talked to his linebackers and his defensive line people, the entire Buena Vista defense, prior to the kickoff so that when they got on the field, there wouldn't be any confusion. Danny Rao with a kick. It's caught by Number 10. Right, number 10, Dan Jesse at about, oh, excuse me, that's the wrong lineup once again. Number 10 is Johnny Thomas. The Johnny Thomas, yes. Illinois. Now Proctor has not carried the ball for some time. Uh, Thomas has been in there. 
And I don't know if something's wrong with Proctor or if he'll be back. See, he comes onto the field again. Proctor is nowhere to be found. Maybe we can get an injury report on Proctor. If he's injured, what's the situation? I don't know. But let's concentrate on what we got now. Walshire under center. Number 21, Mario Coleman in motion. Walshire with a hand up. No, Fakes good draw play. Thank. And it's caught by number, no, it's trapped. They call it a trap. Number 12, Devin Willis couldn't come up with the ball. Walshire's passing a low. And it's got to be frustrating for Walshire because he's going to be far, falling far below his average of yardage today. You can really tell he's getting upset. I don't know if he's upset with his offensive line. I think he should be upset with the Buena Vista defensive line because they're the one that's making trouble for him today. Doing just an excellent job. Uh, Thomas is the, the setback. He motioned over to the left side of the line. Walshire is going to have four wide receivers in the tight end in this set. The run and shoot kind of upper Iowa offense. We got a blitz going on, and Cachette, oh, almost gets him. Washer is forced out of the pocket, forced to run. He gets about seven yards, maybe more, maybe less, and that was just great pressure by Cachette and Edwards. Also a nice job by Matt Wilshire, though. Not known for his mobility, but he did a good job of once the pocket broke down and getting to the outside, coming around the corner and getting himself a pretty respectable gain on that play. Gain of seven, as I said, Second, it'll be third down and three on the 48 of Univis or of uh, Upper Iowa. Uh, Wilshire is going to come under center again. He's going to have uh, four wide receivers in the tight end in the run and shoot kind of like set. I don't know if uh, Univis will be blitzing, but I would assume that they would sit back in coverage. Here comes Wilshire again. Wilshire with a draw play of his own gets the first down. Oh. And more. We've got a personal foul, I bet, on somebody. That was just Because blatant. number 68 for the Upper Iowa offense just kept on going. That's Clint, Clint Rogers. Rogers. That's his second one of the game. He's trying to argue with the referees, but I can't see what, what he could be talking about. He hit him five seconds after the play was blown dead. Ran over two Buena Vista players <laughs> at the conclusion of the play. The other players were walking back to the huddle. He just kept on bowling. That, that's no class. I'm sorry, but the play was dead. There's no, no reason for any of that. Just the kind of thing you do not want to see in Division Three or any kind of football game of any organization of any kind. Right. Number 56 for Puna Vista is coming off the field. That would happen to be number 56, Ryan Riesland. I don't know if he's staying on the field or just getting some. Yes, he's Get getting an, he's getting some instruction from Don Hessen, the linebacker coach. That's going to take away Upper Iowa's first down and push him back, way back to about the. 45-yard line. It'll be uh, 48, let's say. third. I think it's third down again, and about. No, they give him the first down. They gave him the first down. They just took away the penalty. Is, is that the they situation? Took away the yards. Yep. Okay, so it's first down and ten from their own 40. They're back to about the 48 again, folks. Thomas alone set back three uh, three wide receiver set. Lynn in motion. Walshire back to pass, almost intercepted. Number 13. Achenbach. We've been again saying his name coverage. all day, and he, there he comes up with another big defensive stop right there. Now they've been working all week. Twait's got to be happy. They've been working all week on stepping up, stepping in front of the receiver without the pass interference. Knocking that ball And knocking away. the ball down or getting an INT. Now they haven't gotten any INTs, but they've certainly been all over the receivers today. Picture perfect by Ryan Achenbach on that one, setting his timing up just perfectly. Brent Achenbach with the coverage. Excuse me. That's okay. I made my mistakes too. <laughs> so uh, Thomas back in the backfield once again. Three wide receivers. Leonon's on the left side and Willis is on the left side. Walshire back to pass again under pressure. That is incomplete. Lynn is pushed out of bounds on an incomplete pass. Nothing doing. Excellent play by Coy Dalton to be right there as the pass is coming in making sure that he doesn't come down with the football. Now he made the hit not to be mean or rough because he was perfectly within his legal rights to do that, but uh, just to make sure that somehow he Lynn didn't come down catch. with that ball. Because these wide receivers are, are capable of making the incredible catches. That incredible athletes, incredible athletes. So we've got Thomas to the near side. Uh, Coleman to the near side as well as Lynn. Over on the far side, number 12, Devin Willis, four wide receivers. Thomas in motion, coming back. He's going to stay back and block. Wilshire going long. He's got a man, and he's got him for a touchdown. No. He stops him at the one-yard line. One-yard line for Willis. Number 32, James. No, check that. Devin Willis. 
with the uh, catch and Achenbach with the stop. Saves, saves him from a touchdown right there. Nevertheless, that was a good play by Upper Iowa Peacocks. They got the they got the man, they got the step. They've been trying it all day. This is the first time that they've even had a prayer. That's so, where we said that speed and athletic ability comes into play. Willis just used pure speed to get by Achenbach on that. Okay, they've got four chances from the one. We've got a flag down on the play. Beavers are about ready to flip their cheerleaders. This is the kind of treatment we get here at Beavers. <laughs> We got a Off, start. Offsides, false start on Upper Iowa. That'll take them back. Thank you, Peacocks. <laughs> take them back to about, this, about the five and a half yard line, we'll say. Where the, but it'll still be first down and goal to go. Now it's time to see if the Peacocks can move the ball in the red zone. But they haven't been in there. They haven't been in there all day. No, they haven't. Their one touchdown was the 60-yard punt return, and this is the furthest into BV territory that the Upper Iowa Peacocks have been all day. This has been an outstanding defensive battle, especially from Univis's standpoint. Right, one little. Wilshire back to pass, a quick pass. Nobody there, nobody, period. Number 21, I think it was intended for Mario Coleman, but he was looking completely the wrong way. Troy Thompson had his man covered. Dan Roberts had his man covered. No, excuse me, number five, Coy, Coy Dalton, who came in for Roberts, had his man covered, and Mitch Cachette was in the area, nothing doing. So Roberts is going to take take number five, Lynn, coming out to the side, and number 32 has come in for the Peacocks. That is Darren Moore. The pass again, broken up by Brett Achenbach. There's flag a flag on the play. That Achenbach was there on the covers, but I think the refs think he was I just think a little too close on that one. Maybe it was a little too early, but still, nevertheless, denied a touchdown. That'll only bring him a little bit closer. That and it'll was, also give him a first down. It'll give him a first down. It'll be third down. Oh, oh they're giving him a first down. My my mistake. Automatic I didn't really first see. down on that, on that penalty. That's a tough break for the Beavers, but nevertheless, let's see what they can do. They're, they're not faltering. Same, same setup. Thompson and uh, Dalton to the near side as D-backs. Hack to the far side, covering Willis. Walshire hands off to number 10, Thompson, who's in, in for, for the, the score. Touchdown. So that brings the Upper Iowa Peacocks just a little bit closer to the Beavers. 21-13 our score on a two-yard run by Thompson. But uh, the Upper Iowa Peacocks cannot be too happy with their performance at this point. Not so far, but that was it. The big play there by Willis has really helped and maybe give him a little momentum. Hopefully the hopefully the offense can come back on here and march it down the field again like they've done a couple times today, get a long drive going, keep the ball away from them and better shift yet, that let's momentum. see if we can block this extra point. That would be nice. It is up and through the uprights, nearly gotten by Riesland. So the score is now 21-14 with 11 minutes and 55 seconds. We're gonna take it to a break and we will be back shortly. Storm Lake, get ready for Honey Kiss Pizza. Hot, delicious pizza on a whole wheat crust, loaded with the finest ingredients and kissed with a sweet touch of honey. It's gourmet pizza like you've never tasted before, served up piping hot and delivered right to your door. Call today and order the Honey Kiss Special. Two medium, two topping pizzas, plus one order of delicious cinnamon breadsticks for only $12.99. Honey on the dough, honey butter on the crust. It's great quality, it's a great value, and it's fast. Call 732-2222 for Honey Kiss Pizza. Welcome back to J. Leslie Rollins Stadium. Dave Fields joining you. And the kickoff here is, is underway. Number 38 for Buena Vista. Hissler returns it, and he keeps going. He is taken down at about the 33-yard line of Buena Vista. So Steiner's gonna have to come back on the field and lead his troops down. Let's see if we can get another score. They've been moving the ball quite well on the first two possessions of this of this fourth quarter. We are now 21-14 is our score. Beavers on top and this is a welcome sight for Coach Twitch's bunch as Stoddard brings them up to the line. Hendrickson and Hart are your setbacks. Suisaw is your wide receiver to the near side. Hart, the second back through with the ball, gets a gain of about three yards. Maybe four to the 34 yard line. They do give him forward progress to the 34. 
So it'll be second down and about ooh, six yards. Now, Snyder has been doing a good job as Dillvo brings in the play. She we saw out, been doing a good job of moving the ball and, and keeping his troops focused as they spin down the field, bringing them up. And here is a welcome sight to see. Frank Martin the third is back in the game. We have some movement. Number 69, if you look on your screen, is back in the game. Frank Martin hasn't played all game, and he's probably, he's had a tender ankle. His, his, his playing has been questionable. Right. We're going to have a false start here on number 40. Mark Hofstra got just a little too excited about the next play and jumped off sides. But uh, let's see if the Beavers can keep going here. They're not uh, in the. They're not out of the woods yet as far as this game is concerned, so they cannot rest on their laurels. 11-12 remaining in the fourth quarter. So we saw Ann Dillabo out. It's it's important that the Beavers keep their focus. Yes, it is. They can't they can't let this Upper Iowa touchdown here get them down. They got to just go out there. Hopefully Martin in there will be the spark plug they need to keep them going down the field. Hendrickson Hart, starter, back to pass, lofting one up for Schwesaw, and broken up by number three for Upper Iowa, Dana Mathis. He's done a very good job covering Buena Vista receivers today. And he gets up limping a little bit. I don't know if he turned his ankle or whatnot, but he's not running at the full speed that he normally runs at. Mathis did make a beautiful play on that one. Stouter with a nice ball down the sidelines, but Mathis' coverage was just too good. So it'll be third down and 11 on this play. Passing situations, what kind of situations that BV wanted to avoid, but uh, they have been moving the ball pretty good to this point. Stouter under center. Drops back to pass. Draw play to... To Brian Hart, get hit, gets hit by his own man, then wrapped up by the middle linebacker, number 24, Demetrius Hayes. So the Beavers will be forced to punt. And Hoofke, Pat Hoofke, will be punting once again. So let's see what's going to happen with the Beavers, if they can get a punt way down deep in the territory and cause a lot of frustration again for Upper Iowa. Oh, Lynn, what a hit. Tackled by his own man, it looked like. No, there. number 41, Thad Dykstra with a crushing shot for the Beavers. We're going to send you to a commercial break. We'll be back with the Beavers on defense, the Peacocks on offense, and 10.25 to go. Storm Lake, get ready for Honey Kiss Pizza. Hot, delicious pizza on a whole wheat crust, loaded with the finest ingredients and kissed with a sweet touch of honey. It's gourmet pizza like you've never tasted before, served up piping hot and delivered right to your door. Call today and order the Honey Kiss Special. Two medium, two topping pizzas, plus one order of delicious cinnamon breadsticks for only $12.99. Honey on the dough, honey butter on the crust. It's great quality, it's a great value, and it's fast. Call 732-2222 for Honey Kiss Pizza. Back at JLS Rollins Stadium, a surprise Proctor, Billy Proctor, checked back into the game, ran on the first play for a gain of three. Now, in case you're just joining us, 21-14 is our score, and the Beavers are up, and they're mighty excited. Oh. The ball tipped by Cachette, but caught by the receiver. The refs are saying no catch on that one. Oh, they're saying no catch because Dan Roberts made a heck of a play. Forced to, the ball out of his hands. But we have a personal no, foul he, of some kind. Number five. Number five, Gary Lynn's on the sidelines arguing with the referees, so, and I think they threw the flag at him. We'll see what's happening. We may have an illegal block or, or offensive pass interference. Let's see what the referee has to say. Personal foul personal on Upper Iowa Personal foul on Upper Iowa University. Coach University. Twait says take the penalty. We'll push him back. It's better to do that, I think, wouldn't you think? Because they were at third and seven. Now oh, yeah. they'll be at third and, and maybe uh, 17, I definitely, think. Definitely, definitely. Very good call. I think Gary Lynn was on the sidelines arguing with the refs, and I think the ref didn't appreciate his arguments there. He may have said something bad, or he may have blocked somebody poorly. We didn't see the play, so we can't really make any assumptions. Nevertheless, the Beavers are in great position. Unsportsmanlike conduct was the call. We thank our statistician for that one. And pushes the Beavers back, or pushes the, the Upper Iowa Peacocks back to third and 23 on the Peacock 29. It's a big hole for the Peacocks to fight out of. Hopefully the Beavers can Proctor, here. Proctor in motion. Wilshire back to pass. Tipped ball. Near inter no, Roberts could not hold on to the ball. Close, but no cigar. Hard to pick the best defensive player on that play. All of them were in there doing their jobs. The ball was tipped by Jason Cluckholm 
cause the ball to pop in the air. Number 57, what a play. They, they, they've been just playing all, all out. Williams back to receive. Buena Vista is coming after this one because they're deep in Upper Iowa territory. Now it looks like they drop back to set up the return here. Yes, they are dropping back, but pressure nevertheless almost gotten. Williams calling for the fair catch at his 38-yard line, which is not a bad situation since he had number 84 in his face. That's right. Charlie Faulkner. 30-yard, 39-yard line is not bad starting field position there. Buena Vista has been there all day. Now that's been a key thing starting field position for the Beavers as Coach Twake ready Stoddard to go back on the field. You've got to be, they've got to be happy with their field position which is entirely based both on their defensive play and offensive, but That's mainly right. on their defense, pushing the Peacocks back. Defense has done an excellent job holding them down in the, deep in their own territory so they get the ball. So BV gets the ball in pretty good First, field position. Oh, sorry about that. First and 10, Stoddard going to the right. Fires, complete, oh, Williams couldn't hold on. In and on. out of the hands of Williams. That's a tough pass to hold on to right there on the sidelines. Coverage by number 27 for Upper Iowa, Mark Dutra, a junior out of Earlville, Iowa. Trying to make sure everybody gets their name pronounced at this game. You but bet. That won't happen. So second, ten, second down and 10 on the 38-yard line of the Beavers. Stoddard is taking his team down the field, hopefully. For another score, Williams to the far side, Delavo to the near side. Starter rolling out right. He's, he's running, run. and he's tackled from behind after about a gain of eight yards. So you got to be happy with that run. Nice job by Troy Stoddard to get to the outside, and you can see his speed right there as he blew by a couple of those defensive linemen. And Jim Hendrickson and Andy Joyce made the two blocks that got him around the end. Andy Joyce made one later, but Hendrickson got the one on the defensive end that just cut him down. That sprung him to the outside, and Stouter took it from there and did a really nice job. I was talking to a lot of the, the fullbacks and the backs in the, in the pre, prior weeks to this week, and they say it's like chopping out a big tree, and uh, Upper <laughs> Iowa is our next tree. And you bet. That's a, it's a good thing to hear. They're all pumped up. Hendrickson and Joyce, your setbacks, and they pitch to Joyce coming over to the left side. Joyce runners up, and he oh, oh. almost broke away. He gains a first down and a little bit of extra real estate. Joyce is wrapping up the yardage like it's money that we all need. You bet. Beautiful effort by the Beaver offensive line on there. Ken Medlin especially pulling from the center from, position. From the center position to get out in front and get Joyce those yards needed for the first down. Nice job that was by the a offensive 15 line. 15-yard run, Brad. A 15-yard run. Something that the Beavers have not had in past weeks. No. So this offensive line is pushing its way down the field saying, hey, we like the end zone a lot better than our own. You bet, and they found it a few times today. Three touchdowns already and hoping for another one. Given to the first back through the hole, Hendrickson gains about a yard. Credit that one to number 74 for the Peacocks. That's Keith Jones. Keith Jones, a defensive tackle for the Peacocks. Stoddard going up, waiting for somebody to run his play in. It's going to be Williams. Gain of maybe a half yard on that. We'll call it second and nine and a half as Stoddard brings the team back up to the line of scrimmage. So uh, Hendrickson and Joyce are your setbacks. Williams and Schwesaw to your right. Schwesaw in motion, a pitch to, to Joyce. He breaks a tackle, cuts back. We've got a flag. I do believe that's a face max penalty on the Peacocks of Upper Iowa. And I think it will be on number 74, Steve Norris, because he came in from the outside linebacker position and just ripped at the face mask there. Nope, it's holding on Buena Vista. Oh, that's a terrible call in my opinion, but hey, I'm not down on the field to make that decision. That's why That'll we're push up here. The, yeah. <laughs> that's a questionable comment, though, bro. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> That'll push the Beavers back 10 yards to their own 46-yard line. It'll make it third. Looks like we got on camera there, Dave. Oh, did we? Jason Jeweler, yes. man on the field, getting us some air time. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Jason. All you right. are the friend. Go find us some people to look at. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the action now. Jason Jewell, one of the fine cameramen. I, I believe we have Jake Krobe. Darren Courtney is also helping Grant out. Grant Dawson. Grant Dawson. All of them. All of them are doing a wonderful, marvelous job. People down over at Logging KBBC are doing well. Starter rolling out left. 
chased by number 74, the outside linebacker, caught from behind after a game of about four yards. It's going to probably be a third down in about 15. 74 is Steve, Steve Norris. Norris again. We talked about him just a couple plays earlier. Again, did an excellent job of getting past the Beaver offensive line and pressure and Stauder to the outside. He had nowhere to go. And we've got the wave going here at, at, at the J. Leslie Rollins Stadium. You don't see that much. No, you don't, but they've got a big crowd here today. That's what you like to see. That's what gets the team fired up, and they got the 21-14. And this could be the kind of win that just springs board the, is a springboard for the rest of the season. It really can be. And we'll talk about that in a little bit as Stauder brings his team up the line on third down and 15, obviously a passing situation. But we've said that a couple times before, and they ended up running. So we'll see what happens. This is true. And, and there he goes. And, so he and he breaks, breaks the tackle. Three. And he will not make the first down, but. Very tough run by Andy Joyce on that one. Twain is a pretty, uh, pretty honorary little guy. He's getting, <laughs> getting crazy down there. So that'll bring up fourth down at about, to, I'd say, about 12 yards. No, nine. Now, if they want to go for it, they could. But obviously, they're going to elect to punt. And with only Holgriff is going to be doing the punting. A bounce snap, but he handles it well. Oh, it's partially just gets blocked. It, past him. it is partially blocked, but it's rolling <laughs> and it's rolling down at about the I can't see from here the 11 yard line. The 11 yard line. That's right, Dave. We talked all day about how great the defense has played and the talent and everything, but luck has a lot to do with that too. We're going to go to a break right now as the we change possession. We'll be back in just 30 seconds. Remember how good it felt the first time you gave five? Well, now there's another way to give five. Set a goal to give more. Five hours a week and 5% of your income to the causes you care about. It'll make you feel like a winner every day of your life. So give more. Give five. Call 1-800-55-GIVE-5. We're back to Gene Leslie Rollins Stadium. Brad and I just miss it. Mitch Cachette, we've been mentioning his name all day with an INT, and that is just a great play. Just his luck, his biggest play of the game. We have to be on a commercial break. We're sorry about that, Mitch. We hope we can get it to you on an instant replay pretty quick here. Well, let's see if we can have that in the control room. Is a very talented group of individuals. But coming up the line, Starter is gonna see if he can push his troops back into the end zone. Starter rolling right. Henderson with a great block, job. a pass, and it's complete, I do believe, to Craig Williams. No, the pass is incomplete. He dropped it. Unable to get the replay for you, but what happened, folks, if we can place it to you in memory, look at there. There you go. This defense is fired the up. The fired you can tell up right defense. There. That's Don Hessen, the linebacker coach for Buena Vista, and he really has his team fired up. Cachette was going to his left leaped to his right and snagged that ball. Second and 10, Strader under center. Hendrickson and Hart, your setbacks. Dillavo in motion. We've That's got some movement on the line. I don't know what it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be encroachment on Upper Iowa there. Uh, can't get a number on that one down there. One of the big boys. Let's see what's, what number we got there. Number 79. 79 for Upper Iowa's Charles Taylor. And it is in fact against oh. the Beavers. <laughs> So I don't know what who, who the penalty is again against. The numbers are not announced in college football. The Beaver isn't too upset. <laughs> but, you know, we're still a pretty good field position where we shouldn't be too upset about it. So it'll be second down and 15 on the 30 of Upper Iowa after that great interception by Mitch Cachet. Just a beautiful play. Now, it's really, it's really an advantage when you have a deep enough lineup that you can bring somebody back into right. the game for an injured player and do so well. Hart up the left side, breaks free for a little bit, pushed back, a gain of maybe three. Ford momentum will probably take him to about the 27 yard line. That'll set up third and about, oh, we'll call it 12. Six, 12. Because it was third and 15, if it's correct, if we're correct, and usually we are, <coughs> that will be. <laughs> yeah, pretty much all the time. That'll be, yeah. <laughs> a good sideline shot, as you see all the, the players attentively paying the concentration. The ball, like we said, is on the 27-yard line of the Peacocks. E either way, we have just held the Peacocks offense down. It's third and seven on the 26-yard line. Dillavo in motion as Stoddard stomps his foot. They give it to Hart going up the right side. He cuts back a little bit, and he'll gain another three yards. 
That's going to be a fourth down and ten play they're going to set up right there. And you got to question the call plan on that one. You don't know, maybe they should. The rollout with Stoddard has been working all day, and why they, they ran it up the gut. Now it's going to be a big fourth down decision right here. But they are going for it. Obviously, a passing situation, but then again, you're never there, sure. There is no Swift. obvious in this game right here, and he's done a great job so far. Obviously, with the 21 14. Yes, that's what he said. His goal was to mix it up, keep the defense guessing, and he's done a great job of that because he's gotten them confused a couple times here, just like he's gotten us confused. Yeah, no doubt. Fourth and 10 is is the yardage. Stoddard under center, rolling back, straight back, setting up the screen, it looks like. They get it to Hendrickson. He's up the sideline. I do believe he's just short of the That's going to be close. That is really going to be close. I don't know if they're going to measure or how far. Because the defense it's is coming out on the field. Yes, it's short. But nevertheless, they did move the ball effectively on that drive. Down to about the 18-yard line. So that's where the Peacocks will start. At their 6 13, 7, between 16 and 18 yard line. No, they're on their 17, we'll call it. In between the 17 and the 18 yard line, trailing by 7 with only 3.59 to work with. But you got to remember, this is a dangerous offense. It doesn't take them too long to no. get down the field if they get things going. Proctor coming around the right side. He is a very talented player. Fast. First, Just very fast. The speed is unreal. But Defense did a nice job of getting to the outside and getting him out of bounds. And that is definitely a first down as he moves the ball out to the 37 yard line. So a gain of, gain of 20. 20 yards there we for go. Billy Proctor. Defense has got to keep the composure right here. Now they can't let Walshire coming excited. up. He's hit as he throws the ball and it's tipped by number three, Brent Achenbach, incomplete. Thank you. Beautiful job by Akbach. Again, we've said his name through many times today, and he just keeps doing a great job. Now, we don't quite know Stoddard's statistics, but Stoddard's had a great game. So for final stats, we'll probably just go through the key players and key plays of the game, as uh, it's been hard to keep track with the no-huddle offense going as it's going. Not much time to write th keep things in order here. But we'll get halftime statistics out to you, or final statistics as soon as we can and elaborate on what we can. But this has been a great game for Buena Vista defensively, as well as offensively. Proctor on the draw play, he's going nowhere. Jason Giesel, Giesel again. Com Giesel comes up from the left side from his defensive end position, slow in getting up. That may be uh, trouble coming off the field. Looks like he has maybe a tender ankle. But he came over from that left defensive end position and made a heck of a play. That's right. The and cheerleaders. There's, there's three of our cheerleaders right down there. That's Jade Handy and Josh Niemeyer down there. Trying to keep that crowd fired up and hamming up just a little bit for our cameras, and too. And here is a welcome sight to see. Number 64, Jamie Anderson, back in action for the first time in about four weeks. And that is just a welcome sight to see as Walshire completes his pass to the 43 of Buena Vista. That was number five, Gary Lynn, on the reception there. Walshire did a nice job of dropping back into the pocket, holding on to it as long. He had, he had pretty good time there. The offensive line gave him some time, and he found the open receiver and made the connection. Good Anderson job. Anderson in for a play and out right after that as Kiesel comes back in. But Anderson had to be happy just to get on the field You again. bet. It's nice to see some of our familiar players back in the action. The pass completed, There's but Dan Roberts coming up quick to make the stop at the 36 yard line. This is gut check time for the Beavers. Yes it is, that's right Dave. They can't let, they gotta keep fired up here. They gotta keep pushing. They gotta keep the pressure on Walshire like they've been doing all day and they gotta hold on now. Because 2.30 left in the game, there's plenty of time for Walshire to put that thing in the end zone. definitely plenty of time. Walshire under center, Proctor in the back field. And a handoff to Proctor, he's going nowhere. Cushette, he goes about, uh, about, he gets the first down, goes to about the 30 but a lot less than he could have gone in the past two runs. He's gone about an average of about 15 to 20 yards. Yeah. Number eight, Mitch Cachette coming off the field now. He's played an excellent second half. Coach Twait's got to be happy with his performance. You can't push the people coming back from the, from injury too far. That's right. So that's good that he's, that he's played, and they may just keep him out the rest of the game. Number 66, Ryan Riesland back in the game. He's looking to blitz. Now he backs out again. Walshire back to pass. The pass complete to the 15 yard line to number 12, Devin Willis. So Will they're at the 12 yard line, folks. 
knocking on the door of the Beavers. This is only the second um, second time they've been down in the red zone of the Beavers. First touchdown came on a punt return. That's right. Willis did a nice job of finding the seam in the defense there. And Wilshire just just plugged that ball right between the numbers there for the for the reception. So, so there's a timeout by the by the Peacocks, sending them onto the sidelines. We're, we're gonna stay. We're gonna send you to a commercial break, and we will be right back. The Peacocks are knocking on the Beavers' door when we continue. Storm Lake, get ready for Honey Kiss Pizza. Hot, delicious pizza on a whole wheat crust, loaded with the finest ingredients and kissed with a sweet touch of honey. It's gourmet pizza like you've never tasted before, served up piping hot and delivered right to your door. Call today and order the Honey Kiss Special. Two medium, two topping pizzas, plus one order of delicious cinnamon breadsticks for only $12.99. Honey on the dough, honey butter on the crust. It's great quality, it's a great value, and it's fast. Call 732-2222 for Honey Kiss Pizza. Okay, folks, we're back. Everybody's excited. The BB players are saying, we're not backing down. This is our territory. You are not taking our turf. With a minute 57 left, like we said before, big gut check time for the Beaver defense. They played an incredible game, and now this is what it comes down to. Minute 57, first and 10 on the 15-yard line. Walshire up under the center. Billy, Pro Billy Proctor in the, in the backfield. I'm going to do that all day long. Quick pass. That's a timing pattern, and no, he doesn't make no, it. No deal. Number five, Coy Dalton with the defensive pressure. There's a picture of Brian Hart. He's had a heck of a game. He's saying we're number one and we're playing like it. He's all fired up. Backs against the wall, not for long. Let's hope not. Wilshire couldn't hook up on the timing pattern there with number five, Gary Lynn. Defense card by Coy Dalton was excellent. Coy Dalton, Troy Thompson, Dan Roberts to the right. Achenbach covering the Cut. left. And there's and, a, oh, he hands off to Proctor. And Proctor goes just a gain of about two. Huge block right there by number, number 63. Cachette is slow in getting up. I he was plastered. Number 63 just laid a lick on him like you wouldn't believe. 63 is David Coleman. David Coleman, just a huge block on that. Cachette's going to be feeling that one in the morning. And nevertheless, Cachette has had a heck of a game. He, does, he seems to be okay walking up the field into his own power. Walshire up on the center. They haven't been able to score in the red zone right now. Walshire back to pass. He's hit us. He throws the ball. Incomplete pass. Beautiful Incomplete. defensive play. That was number 23. Number 23, Troy Thompson, putting the lick on the wide receiver there, forcing him to drop the ball. That'll be fourth and seven. What What can we say about the Beavers' defense? It's they incredible. As Walshire's dropping back, he's automatically under pressure within two yards of dropping back from center. He's hit as he throws the ball by Barrett, and Thompson is right there. Smash mouth football. That's what you love to see. They're hitting all the time. They're hitting hard. This is it, folks. If they don't score here, they are not going to win the game. Ball One minute and 12 and left in the game. Minute 12, fourth and seven on the 12. Walshire back to pass, going for the end zone. It's tipped by Jamie That Anderson. could be the game, ladies and gentlemen. The Beavers the may have their first that win of the, the season. Game. That could be the game, folks. Jamie Look. Anderson with the tip of the Walshire pass, and they are pumped. Barron's is walking off the field. Look at Anderson, head in between the knees. They are may be a minute eight away from tasting victory. This they crowd is just eight. going com completely bonkers out here with a minute Look eight left. at the sidelines. The Buena Vista Beavers fans are waiting. They've waited long and hard for this win. They've been 0-4, coming oh so close in so many games, a lot of injuries, and this team has come together That's on right. coming day, no less, against a very talented upper Iowa team. Got to remember, the offense has got to be got to be under control here now. No mistakes right here. They're, they're still deep in their own territory, and they just got to be now, careful. Now, barring a turnover, the Beavers can run out the clock with a minute eight. Stoddard under center. We have a stop and play of some kind. I'm I, not positive, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Upper Iowa's got two timeouts left. A delay of game. A delay of game for Buena Vista. That's not so good. So that moves the ball back even further into Beaver territory. Now you got to know that the Peacocks are going to be coming with everybody. Oh, yeah. After stop. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, play calling that Coach Dwight has for his team. I'm pretty sure he'll keep it on the ground here to eat up that 108. A blitz, a flag on the play. I think Upper Iowa was offsides on that. 
as their middle linebacker, Demetrius Hayes, that's blitzing. And I can't really tell, but it looks like it's against Upper Iowa. Yes, and it, it is, is. offsides on Upper Iowa. So to move the ball back to where the Beavers had it to start. And we lost five seconds on the clock. That always helps. Yes, a minute three, folks. This has been just a great contest for the Beavers in many different aspects. Both, uh, both sides of the ball have been coming together and clicking on all cylinders. Yes, they have. Both both sides of the ball. We, we, we stress the defense today, but you can't forget about this offense. Troy Stoddard, Hendrickson, Hart, all of them done just an excellent. And that offensive line. We are under a minute, folks. We are 52 seconds away from victory. The clock is now stopped. Fishers call timeout here. Upper Iowa calls timeout to, to stop the clock. And we're gonna we're gonna keep it here. We're too excited. <laughs> As you can see, Stoddard coming over to the sidelines. This has just been an inspired offensive display, but the defense is what's really set the tone for this game. You can't deny it. And Coach Twit, all the coaches, all his assistants, just done a great job. They, they made the right calls, things have happened. And you can't count out the luck either. There's been a little bit of luck involved in all these plays. Bounce here, roll there, just done it. It's just been a great day for the Beavers. But luck aside, luck is not what wins you football games in most But it most, never hurts. It never hurts. But in most cases, it's defense that wins you football games. No doubt about it. Dan Roberts, that secondary, Aachen, Thompson. And what about the Troy return? Dalton and return people and the special teams have all been in there. Uh, the punter for Upper Iowa has had to punt several times. That's number 55. Nelson Rodriguez has had about nine punts today. It's just a lot of different factors, but all, most of them, if not all of them, are determined by the defensive tone of the game. You bet. Stoddard brings him up. He's just going to kneel him down for the rest of this, this contest, I do believe. They came after him, but uh, they're not going to get him. And Upper Iowa cause another timeout. I think that's the final one now. It's pretty much all in the books right now. Let's look at the fans. They're dancing. They're prancing. Get excited, Buena Vista! Another homecoming victory for the Beavers. This is just a great day for Buena Vista, and it's Keith Briscoe's birthday today. It, that just makes it all the better, doesn't it? What a present. I bet, you, I bet you Briscoe is pretty darn happy. Too bad we can't really get him on here and talk to him about the game. That would have been really nice. He's too, he's too excited. He's hanging out in the president's he's, box. He's afternoon. hanging out and partying. You bet he is. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of happy souls here at Buena Vista College helping out with this game today. I've been Innovation Video and KBBC Radio, and I'd just like to say that that has been one great thing. Innovation Video and KBBC Radio have been proud to bring you the 1993 Buena Vista Beavers homecoming game. The Stella Gas was filmed, announced, and presented to you live entirely by the students of Buena Vista College. They worked very hard to make this production come true, and it's kind of nice to be able to film a winning homecoming. You bet game. it is. Glad to put, bring it to the people out there. Hopefully there's a lot of Storm Lake residents out there watching the game with us here. And as Troy Stouter is going to down it again. And, and that this should, should be, be pretty much close to it. There are no more timeouts for they can't Upper stop Iowa. The clock. the clock is just going to keep rolling. I don't know. The, the Beavers are not going to stop it, obviously. Obviously not. We're this on. is a great thing. They're going to have to call a play. But uh, it'll be one more kneel down play. And everybody is standing up here at Buena Vista. Everybody is starting to stand up and be really excited. It's been a great contest for Buena Vista in several respects. And obvious, the most obvious of which is the first win of the season. Yes. Coach Twait talks about how their, their goals change every week. Their goal this week was to finish the season at 5-4. and four, And that all started with a big win against Upper Iowa, which a lot of people said they couldn't do. A lot of people said that a Matt Wilshire and that yeah. Upper Iowa offense would be just too powerful to, for up, for BV to handle, and they they definitely proved them wrong today. There have been a lot of doubters of this football team throughout, but Coach Schwade has maintained, and I say that strongly, that with a healthy team and a positive attitude, there was nothing that was going to stop them. There it is. Troy Stouter kneels down for the final time. That's Five the game seconds and left. Three, two, one, and the Beavers take the field. They have won their first game of the year. It's homecoming 1993, 21 14, and a football flies headstrong <laughs> into the air. The fans here are excited as I, as I read the announcers here. I'm Dave Fields. 
Brad, this is just unbelievable. It's incredible. You, you love to see it. The guys, they've worked so hard all year. They're still, they got, they still got four games to go, but this, is, this could be a turning, turning point in the whole season right now. As you can see, the players shaking hands, and after this, you're going to see about 60 some odd Univista players rushing and just cramming up and down. Look at them there. Look like, at Coach Twink getting the hugs from all the players, all oh, the assistant this coaches. This is just great. It's been a long time coming. You bet. The Beavers are a talented football team, and today they put it together. Look at the joy. Look at the joy of the Beavers. Jeff Post. There's Twait again. There is Jeff Post and Coach Twait. <coughs> you really got to be happy for the guy. Jeff just Post, the defensive coordinator here should be a very commended person. Definitely, today. definitely. They did a great job on defense, and anyone who knows Coach Twait, just, you gotta love the guy. He's just a really great guy to talk to. When you, He loves talking about football. He was a great player for Buena Vista, quarterback back in, I believe it was around 1985. Just did a great job leading the team then, and he's doing a really good job now. Got, got him their first win of the season here. Now, there were a lot of questions on, on Coach Twait's ability to coach the team, but we have all said that Coach Twait has a good fundamental ability to the coach and it's just we've been not getting we haven't been getting the breaks and as you said lady luck was on our side there's right there's there's too many there's too many aspects of a football game to lay, lay a blame on a coach there's there's just way too many and as we saw today i mean when things are going right they get the players in there to do the job bv can play some really good football now we've got to concentrate on the defense there's just no way we can get around it folks we're going to spend a little time explaining some of the aspects of Buena Vista's defense, which held Upper Iowa to nil, almost nil to below their average. Their average was 250 yards of passing, as well as about 99 yards rushing. So they were their third in the conference in total offense. And today, it's really going to knock them down as far as total offense is concerned. We'll give you their halftime of stats. They only had 48 yards of total offense. That is just incredible. It is. It is. The defense just played, and they, they carried it through to the second half. They didn't stop. They didn't stop there. They came back in the second half. Only gave up one more touchdown. They they did just a great job. Now, we're going to concentrate on this entire defense, but we're going to start with the defensive line, due to the fact that they held Billy Proctor and put so much pressure on Matt Walshire. Right. Jason Giesel made made a just a tremendous effort today. Uh, Chris Barons, Jason Edwards, and Jason Cluckholm. And it's just been a great effort by this entire defense. Dalton, Thompson, Grant, Roberts, Achenbach, Murphy, and Cachette, all of them coming together. And every together. other BV player that dressed up today, they all did just a great job. But we're going to have to wrap it up, folks. We are sending you away happy as can be. We are dancing in the aisles. Buena Vista is 1-4. They are now in the win column. They have won homecoming 1993. So long... For Brad Haugen, I'm Dave Fields. We'll see you next year, homecoming 1994. So long, everybody. Show on three.